Today we are looking at something as curious as it is stylish. This what we have here is a Philco 13 inch black and white uh, portable VHF only. There's an option for UHF uh, tele CRT television. Uh, I say it's curious uh, as I can find zero traces of the model number for this television on Google. If you put in the model number of this TV, which is F2003-11, uh, even if you just do F2003, you get absolutely nothing. So there's zero information available on this television on the internet. Luckily, you can find some of the other models that are similar. They made an F2002 and an F2004, but there's nothing labeled for F2003. So we'll take this, we'll give this thing a quick spin. We'll let you check it out here. You can see it's absolutely filthy. I love these, these gills have a pretty cool aesthetic to them. The volume and on off contrast switches, this one here. This is the channel select here. Again, this, this thing is absolutely filthy. It's, I haven't cleaned it or anything, which has been really driving me crazy. Uh, not yet. Um, it has these antennas, which are, you know, they fold up and down here. Um, so that's kind of a neat integrated antenna. It has this leather handle, which luckily for this model is still intact. It has the intact rear cardboard, which does give you the model number, and I can zoom in on that a little later. But it does indeed say it is an F2003-11. You've got the horizontal hold control down here. And then on the, on the other side, you've got the brightness control up top and the vertical, horizontal, vertical hold on the bottom here. And that completes our spinabout. Uh, this front casing is in pretty good shape. It's not too scratched up. Um, I don't know if this TV works. I haven't plugged it in yet. Uh, so we'll plug it in here and we'll see how it goes. Now I found this television in a garage. It had been outside in the elements for approximately 15 years or so, the seller said. Uh, so it did go through hot and cold cycles. It is a fully vacuum tube television. It is not a hybrid or anything, and so I, I did check before I purchased it, and I made sure that the tubes were in there. Uh, again, I don't know the shape of the CRT, if the CRT is any good, or even if it turns on at all, but we'll take the back off here and look at what's inside a little bit before we test the CRT. Here we are at the back of the TV. You can see down here again, there's that model number, F2003-11. Good luck finding anything on it. We'll pop these screws out quick. So you can see here, we've got the IF strip up top. We've got the high voltage cage where the flyback is, and we've got the high voltage tubes over there. We've got a couple tubes hidden down in there, and two more there, and four more around this sound output center. Um, pretty good shape on this TV. You know, it's for being in a garage for 20 years, uh, you know, there's no evidence of rodents inside of this thing. And so, you know, it was pretty, it was pretty promising to open this up and see um, how good a shape it was considering it was just sitting in a garage. The only two clues I have on this TV I can find that give me any idea of what it is, is the first clue is the chassis model number here is an E11. And if you put that into the SAMs, you get this schematic, which tells you it's good for the 7010s to the 7011s. You'll notice that the uh, F2003 is nowhere in here. You get 2002 and you get 2004, nothing in between. The only other clue I have that tells me it's, a, it's the E11 is that the CRT type is listed as a 14QP4A. And on the schematic, up here in the corner, it says that the 7E11s have the 
the A version of that too. So that's the only thing I can find about this. I assume it's a 2004 variant or it's more 2004 than it is 2002. All right, this is the moment of truth. If the CRT is dead, then this whole thing stops here. But uh, hopefully we get a good rating on the BNK467 here. I can see on the chart, it says that we need to use 14, 24, 6.3 volts on the heater and we need to use plug number 10. And amazingly, I actually do have the socket for number 10. Uh, it's the first time I've actually tested one of these where I actually have the socket, so it's kind of neat. Um, so let's power this up. Let's get up to 6.3 on the heater and you use 50 volts for the G1 on uh, this particular tube. It's not mentioned here, but that's just how it works. Uh, so here we are. We're going to dial in a heater value of 6.3. Error on the smaller side a little bit. Dial in a G1 of 50 volts. Okay. Then let's see if we get. Oh, I'm seeing light in there and see if we get any cutoff. Oh, yeah. Plenty of cutoff. Oh, boy. Wonder if there's too much heat going on. Uh, it's a little scary. There is too much cutoff. Let's go. Let's turn this heater down a little bit. Did not like. Did not like how much cutoff there was. Now let's go back. Well, I double, triple checked on the internet and it's definitely supposed to be 6.3 volts on the heater and um, I don't know what this means, but this cutoff is way higher than it's supposed to be. And then when we go on the test, you know, she's pretty much dead. So unfortunately it looks like according to this tester that our CRT is way dead, which kind of sucks. But we'll turn it on anyways and we'll see what happens. You never know. All right, we are all plugged in here to the isolation transformer. We got a Variac. This is the hottest of hot chassis, so very dangerous. Um, we're gonna bring this up right now. No good. She is deader than a doornail. Okay, well, unfortunately, uh, that's all we've got for right now. Uh, I took a couple of the eight, six or so of the high power, high voltage tubes out. I tested them all. They all tested absolutely brand new, perfect. And they were Philco branded tubes, so they had to have been the original. Um, we tested the CRT and it gave us some weird stuff. Um, I, I checked online all over the place and everything says 6.3 volts on the heater. So I don't, I really don't know what's going on with the cutoff, but, uh, if you go into the test mode, it, uh, registers as a dead CRT. So it, it might be a, a, a goner dead CRT, unfortunately. Um, I, put all those tubes I tested back in. I noticed some of the sockets felt a little like they could be broken. There could be a couple bad 
tube sockets going on here. Um, but um, I'm gonna have to take this thing apart. I can finally clean it, uh, take it apart, get the chassis out, and we'll look at it some more at some other time. But for now, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.